today on Destined to Win. God is not calling us to have a failure free faith, but he is calling us to have a failing forward faith. In other words, he's calling us not to a mistake-free life, but a life that learns from its mistakes and is committed not to repeating and living in the mistake once the mistake is brought to your attention by Almighty God. God says you're destined to win. We gotta turn it around. How many of you know that God is a master artist? How many of you know master artists don't get a canvas out and just take all the paint that they kind of have left over and just start throwing paint against the canvas going, I don't know what this is really going to become. I, I hope this becomes something good right here. Maybe a little bit of green here. Maybe, maybe a little bit of yellow here. Maybe a little bit of red here. You know, let me splash some black on there. Wow, that's looking good. That's looking abstract. Oh, man, masterpiece. How many of you know that's not the way master artists do it? Here's the way a master artist does it. They start with the end in mind. They think, I, I know, I can see what I want to make here. I, I, I have a vision for what I want this thing to become. I mean, they've lived it, they've dreamed it, they've experienced it. I mean, it's real to them. And then once they have that end in mind, here's what they do. They pick the colors on purpose and they pick the canvas on purpose and they, they pick the size and they pick the scene and they, they, they pick the backdrop and everything becomes an intentional stroke of genius in order to get to the end product that has already been designed but that needs to be carried out. And in Isaiah chapter 46, verse number 10, here's what we're told about. God. He says, I'm God. There's no other. I'm God and there's none like me declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. What's that mean? It means that, that God's seen it, that God's planned it, that, 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 that he's scripted into your storyline the promise that you need to get over your problem. It means that he has decided already in advance how he wants the outcome to be. And so there is really no problem that has come into our lives that takes Almighty God by surprise. God has already visited your future and dropped your promise there. And that's why Joseph, for example, even before he had a pit or a prison, there was a palace waiting for Joseph. Even before Elijah knew that he would go through a famine, there were ravens waiting in the wings to bring him med, meat and bread in the morning and in the evening. Even before his brook dried up, there was a widow woman from Zarephath waiting to sustain him there. Even before Peter denied Jesus three times, there was a rooster waiting to crow. Even before there was a tax liability, there was a coin in a fish's mouth waiting for, for Peter to pull it out of the water and pay that bill even before the problem there was and is a promise that already exists in our future our job is to get to the place of the promise can you say amen, amen. God has your promise in store for you it's laying in your future in Genesis chapter number 22 we find the story of Abraham we've all heard his story before how God called him out of obscurity to be the father of our faith and promised him that through his offspring, all nations of the earth would be blessed. And simply what that meant is that through Abraham's lineage, the Messiah would come. And at first, Abraham was excited and he embraced the promise of Almighty God. And he left his home country and he went for a land that he didn't know of. But then he went 15 years without the promise and he started to doubt his calling. And Abraham's faith begins to waver the 15 year point. And we look and we go, come on, Abraham, I just believe God. 15 years, hello? Some of y'all for 15 days. <laughs> you're like weeble wobble. You know, you just it one way and the other way, you know. 15 minutes. I'm thinking, you did pretty good, Abraham. You held out for 15 years. 
That's pretty good stuff right there. But after 15 years, notice the conversation he has with God. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 says, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram, I'm your shield and exceeding great re reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? In other words, God, uh, I'm starting to doubt whether or not this is really true here, God. You said but you ain't doing. You said, but you ain't doing. And I'm thinking, this is Abraham? I thought Abraham didn't waver at the, God, at the promise of God through unbelief. He looks like he's wavering right there to me. He looks like he's doubting right there to me. And then God reconfirms the promise to him and kind of gives him that little push, that little oomph to keep on going again. You know what I believe that church is in our lives? Church is that oomph. This is why it's so important to, to be regular in church because church is that little push that we need in the right direction when we begin to woo, waver like a weeble wobble in our life, right? And so he gives him that little push. He reminds him of the promise and Abraham begins to go strong again but a little bit more time goes by and they still haven't had a child and so Sarah comes up to him and Sarah says, well listen, since God has blocked my promise and that's where our problem is most of the time we think that God is blocking our promise. And when we think that God is blocking our promise we get in a whole bunch of mess because God never blocks his promises in our lives. It's the enemy that blocks the promises or us that blocks the promises. But they think God is blocking the promise. And so she says, well, why don't you sleep with my handmaiden, Hagar, and have a child with her. And then we'll raise the child like it's our own. And Abraham's like, I'm a team player, yo. <laughs> whatever you say, sweetheart, whatever I can do. And he goes in and he has an affair with his wife's secretary I thought he was a perfect example of faith Abraham I thought he was strong in faith I thought he didn't waver I thought he had faith without failure but now he's got a baby through another person and guess what Abraham's got going on in his life baby mama drama <laughs> and if you don't think the Bible is relevant come on man this may not have been relevant 50 years ago, but we live in a day and age, sadly, where we got baby mama drama going on all the time. That's because we lost our values. We've lost our morals. We've lost our way. We've, we've reduced God's word to an opinion instead of a life lesson to live by. And so we have all these issues going on in our lives and, and he's got this issue going on in his life and, and, and so now he's got this other child and he's got all the baby mama drama going on but God still loves him anyway. And God says, I'm still going to give you your own child with your wife, Sarah. Only problem is Abraham's 100 and Sarah's 90. And you know what Abraham does? In essence, he looks in God's face, he says, they don't make little blue pills that powerful. You think I'm kidding you? Look at this. Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. Man, here's God. God coming along and said, no matter how much you've messed up and no matter how much you've screwed up and, you, and you've lied and, and you've laid with somebody else that you should have laid with, I, I'm still going to give you your promise. You know what Abraham does? He laughs in God's face. But wait, wait a second. Paul said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Paul said he wavered not. Paul said he considered, even though his body was dead, he considered not his own body dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he gave glory to God. But the story behind the highlight reel is that he laughed in God's face. P Pastor, how could, how could this be? Here's how it could be. Because God is not calling us to have a failure-free faith but he is calling us to have a failing forward faith. In other words, he's calling us not to a mistake-free life, but a life that learns from its mistakes and is committed not to repeating and living in the mistake once the mistake is brought to your attention by Almighty God. In other words, you may have thought you needed to lie your way to the promise, but eventually you must realize that God's truth will set you free. You may think you have to manipulate the outcome, but eventually you realize that God's miracles are greater than our manipulation. And at first, you may laugh when it appears to be impossible, but sooner or later you realize that with God, all things are possible. 
You, you fell forward. You learn from your mistakes. I consider it a privilege to come into your home every week. When God opened up the door for us to share the gospel on worldwide television, it was both exciting and scary. Exciting because we literally would be able to share the gospel with and help disciple millions of people, some far from God and others who just needed to be encouraged in their faith. But it was also scary because we didn't have the resources to do it. But we stepped out in faith and trusted that God would provide. As we did, God spoke to my heart and he said, Gideon, you know the story. God used him to deliver Israel from the vast Midianite army with just 300 men. So we started our One of 300 partnership, where we invited people to contribute $100 every month to help us reach the world with the gospel. There's already been a tremendous start to this project and we are so grateful. And now we're extending the opportunity to you to become One of the 300. As a special way of saying thank you for your financial support, all of our 300 partners will receive my book, Turn It Around. It's based on Romans 8.28, which says, and we know that all things work together for the good, for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. My second book, After You Die, which answers the big questions of life, like how do we know there's a heaven? How do we know there's a hell? Is there really a God? And what does Jesus have to do with all this stuff? Faith Church's very own worship CD called Miracle, and every month, a teaching series via digital download. So become a 300 partner today and help us reach the world with the gospel by calling right now. Thank you so much in advance for your faithfulness and generosity. Take action, we need your help. And always remember, with Jesus, you are destined to win. By the way, thank God we have them as examples, right? The Bible says everything that happened to those in the Old Testament are there as examples to us, so we don't need to repeat the same behavior. Hello? And so 25 years, and he's like, I got to do something. Because we, when God sees us floundering, God doesn't go, well, just go ahead and get yours. It's like God, God intervenes. God, God does what he can. God tries to position us. And so God is looking at Abraham and Sarah floundering. And here's what God does. Here's the genius of God. Have you ever been blown away by the genius of God? God goes, give me an H. You're like, huh? I never read that in my Bible, Pastor. God said, never give me an H over here. Yeah, he did. Remember what his name was called? It was Abram. God said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change your name to Abraham. H. Give me an H. He said, you know who her name is? It's Sarah. You know what I'm going I'm to call her name now? Sarah. H. Give me an H. What's up with God with the H? Is God into, you know, what they call that game? You know, they, give me an H on the board. What is that game called? Come on. Vanna White. What's her name? Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> so y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, but what's up, Pastor? Why would God do that? Because God wanted to put Abraham and Sarah in a position where they could have chest-ready faith by employing, by putting a tool, by dropping a tool in their hand to combat the problem and focus on the problem. And that was that they would be able to speak out on a regular and a daily basis the promise in the face of the problem. Because you know what Abraham means, right? It means father of many nations. And you know what Sarah means? It means queen and you can't be a queen unless you have a nation behind you. And so every time they would call each other's names. Think about this. You can picture Sarah. Abraham, can you help me get out of bed? Abraham, bring my walker over here. Abraham, can you go get my false teeth for me? Abraham, can you help me pick up this box? I'm coming, Sarah. I'm coming, Sarah. I'm coming, Sarah. The genius of God. Why is it the genius of God? Because God said, what can I do that they're going to do every single day to get them to speak the promise in spite of the problem? 
to get them even though they're getting older by the day and they're getting older by the year, to get them in the face of their problem to keep speaking out, child is on the way, child is on the way, child is on the way, child is, I know I'm 100 but I'm going to be a father and I know she's 90 but she's going she's gonna to give birth to a son. I, I know it, I know it, I know it, child coming, child coming. Here's what he said, he said, I'm just going to change their names so their very names mean what the promise that I gave them is so every time they speak it, they can call into existence the very thing that they're believing me for. The, the genius, the genius of God. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that if you want to have a, a test-ready faith, you need to speak the promise despite the problem. And can I tell you, that ain't easy. Do you know that here's our answer? It's right underneath our nose. Where, where, where my answer at, God? Where my, where my answer at, God? Where my, God, look underneath your nose. I'm looking right underneath my nose. I don't see nothing here. God, there's nothing there. Just blank, the purple rug right there. God, no, 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 you, your mouth. Tis your answer. Remember what Jesus said? Listen to it. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now let me just clarify that. That doesn't mean that you could speak into existence things that are not promised in the Bible. Right? A lot of people think it's magic. It's not voodoo. It ain't magic. It's getting an agreement with God. If God said it, then you can say it. If God didn't say it, then you shouldn't say it. Because when you say stuff other than what God has said, you might get it, but it ain't going to be from God, and it ain't going to be something that's going to be a blessing in your life. It might be something that curses your life. Because you can call for blessings, and you can call for curses in your life. Remember what Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 said? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life, blessing and cursing. And those who love it will eat its fruit. James tells us in James chapter 3, verse 1, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able to also bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn the whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. What's this telling us? Our mouth is the steering wheel to the life. It points us in the direction of the promise or causes us to move of course, in our life. We need to speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. In the fa and here's what happens when you speak it and speak it and speak it. Sooner or later, guess what? You begin to give glory to God. What does that mean, give glory to God? What it means is the word kabod. And it means wait. Have you ever noticed what happens when a problem persists? It becomes weighty. Weights you down. Starts dragging you around. Starts getting you depressed. Starts causing all sorts of bad uh, things to come out of your life because you got a problem, you got a problem, you got a problem. And see, here's what we do when we got problems. We're, we're convinced we can't fix them. And so here's what Abraham did. He kept speaking, he kept speaking, he kept speaking, he kept speaking, he kept speaking. And sooner or later, all of a sudden, he started putting more weight in what God said then what the problem was saying. He started putting more weight in God's ability than the inability of his body. He started putting more weight in God's miraculous power than in the impossibility that he was facing. And here's what happens to you and I when we speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. All of a sudden, God becomes the heavy in the situation. God becomes the power in the situation. And we begin to give him all of the weight. Speak it. That's how you have a test ready faith. Abraham uh, begins down this journey in verse 22. I'm sorry, chapter 22, verse 2 says, Then he said, God speaking to Abraham, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he, he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said to the young men, 
stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Second thing, if you want to get your promise that's waiting for you in your future, trust God when things don't make sense. Do you know what Abraham said in verse number five to his servant? He said, um, you stay here, and me and the lad, we're going to go up, we're going to worship, and then we're coming back. Did he misunderstand God? God said, go sacrifice your son. He said, we're coming back. What was happening? He, there, was, there was a certain reasoning going on in Abraham's mind. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19 says this in the King James, the one that's going to go up on the screen, screen, the first word says concluded, but in the King James it says reasoned. That God was able to raise Isaac even from the dead. What am I telling you when it doesn't make sense? You need to reason. You need to reason that God is for you. That God is on your side. That he who spared not his only begotten son, how shall he not with him freely give you all things to enjoy? You need to realize that God's in your corner and God is fighting for you. And you need to reason God won't let me down and God will come through. And even though I don't understand. I can trust God when it doesn't make sense because I'm reasoning the right way. If you want your promise, you've got to trust God even when it doesn't make sense. Number three on your outline, beginning in verse number six, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Was he lying to his son or was he reasoning? God will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. They came to the place which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar upon the wood, and Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to, kill, to, anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Number four on your outline, if you want to get to your promise that is waiting for you in your future, you need to settle the who's number one issue. Fact is, this thing called Christianity works a little different than we think. We think that this thing called Christianity works like this. I serve God so my life can be blessed. American Christianity... Yeah. Biblical Christianity? No. I serve God. The journey of the Christian is this. It's so that God can become number one in our lives. The journey is, is about us loving God more than self and us loving God more than friends and us loving God more than family and us loving God more than spouse and us loving God more than jobs and us loving God more than hobbies and us loving God more than securities and us loving God more than things to us loving God more than anyone or anything that's out there. And here's the deal. When it comes to it or them or God. The journey is about it's God every time. Think about this. Test comes. How do I put God first in this test? How do I put God first now? Well, I'm going to put God first here. It would be easier for me to do that, but I'm going to put God first. 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 Oh, my God. My promise. You see, see, it's all, the question is wrong. The question is, if we just make the conscious decision during every test that comes our way, how do I put God first in this situation? You will walk right into the promise because if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added onto you. You're watching an excerpt from Pastor Frank's message, That Didn't Surprise God. For your gift of $5 or more, you can receive this complete message. Just call 
5262 and request your copy today. We decided to call this series Random because instead of preaching about one theme for six weeks or so, I decided to share whatever God laid on my heart for that week. I pray that these messages were timely words directly from heaven that minister to you at your point of need because I believe that one word from God can change your entire life. Do you know what else can change your life? Making Jesus Christ your personal Savior. If you've never asked God to forgive you of your sins and invited Christ into your life, then pray this prayer with me. Father, I know that I'm a sinner, but that you sent Jesus Christ to die for my sin and shed his blood for all the wrongs that I've ever done. I repent of my sin, I turn from it, and I ask you to come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for loving me, accepting me, and forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has just come into your heart and you've received eternal life. The Bible says these things we write to you who believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may know that you have eternal life. You have God's word on it. And if you write me or call in to let me know that you've made Christ your Lord and Savior, I'll send you a booklet absolutely free to get you started on your journey of faith. Let us know what God is doing in your life through this ministry. Thanks again for watching and always remember that with Jesus, you are destined to win. I'm a believer. How do I get out of this spiritual funk? Nothing is going the way I planned. Where is God in all of this? I'm so broken right now. Can God still cause me to shine? The answers to these random questions all have one source, God's Word. One of the simple ways that every single one of us can cause our life to shine is just to refuse to stay in the pit. Get up when life comes to knock you down. That is one of the ways that you show the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Pastor Frank shares biblical insight in this five-part audio series, Random. Each message is a timely word from the Holy Spirit to encourage you in your walk and includes got funk? That didn't surprise God. The mommy for me principle. Don't drop your weapons. And glow stick. When life breaks you, God can cause you to shine. Call 888-700-5262 to request your copy of the five-part random series by CD or digital download for only $25. Or visit us online at franksantora.cc to place your order. Begin to experience the presence and power of God in your day-to-day -day life as you apply God's timely words today. If you're in the New York City or Connecticut area, we invite you to visit us at one of our locations or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc live. On behalf of Pastor Frank and from all of us at Faith Church, we love you and we'll see you next week.